Hi everyone, so we're back again and we're going to read a little bit more of There's a Boy in the Girls' Bathroom. So now we've read 11 chapters now, or sorry, 10 chapters we've read now, and we found that Jeff and Bradley are just starting to become friendly, they're spending a bit more time together, and Bradley has um, been to see Clara, hasn't he? And he's acted in a very strange way, so we're going to read on and see what happens next. A week later, they still hadn't gone into the girls' bathroom. Jeff always had a good reason why it wasn't the right time. Recess was the wrong time because it would be better to wait until after lunch, after the girls had eaten. Lunch was no good because they hadn't had time to digest their food. Listening to Jeff, it would seem that girls never had to go to the bathroom. But Bradley had never been happier. He was thrilled to have a friend. He was even beginning to like school. Jeff had two gold stars next to his name. Bradley felt proud when he looked at them, almost like he earned them himself. What do you want to do? Jeff asked. Nothing, said Bradley. It was lunchtime. They'd finished eating and were sitting out on the grass. Did the councillor say anything stupid today? Bradley asked. Jeff hesitated. He looked down at the ground, then boldly stated, oh, I like her. Bradley was shocked. She said that I can like her even if I, even if you hate her, Jeff asserted. It doesn't mean that you and I can't still be friends. We don't have to agree on everything. She said friendships are stronger when everyone has different opinions to share. You told her I hated her, Bradley asked. Jeff nodded. Good. Except she didn't believe me, said Jeff. She's weird, said Bradley. She never believes anything anyone says. I'm not going to go and see her anymore. She said you don't have to. I told her you wouldn't show up today, and she said that was okay. She said you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. Bradley turned and looked back towards the school in the, in the direction of the councillor's office. That's one of her tricks, he said. So what do you want to do, Jeff asked. Nothing. A basketball bounced away from the basketball court and rolled towards them. Jeff jumped up and grabbed it. Hey, fish nose, over here, called Robbie, a boy from their class. Kick it the other way, urged Bradley. Jeff threw the ball all the way on a... All, I'll read that sentence again. Jeff threw the ball all the way on a fly to Robbie. You should have kicked it onto the roof, said Bradley. Maybe they'll let us play, said Jeff. Let's ask them. Bradley shook his head. No, I don't want to. Jeff watched the boys play basketball for a moment, then sat back down with Bradley. Uh-oh, Bradley said. Here come those girls again. Try not to say hello to them. Hello, Jeff, said Laurie. Hello, said Jeff. Hi, said Melinda. Hi, said Jeff. Hi, Jeff, whispered Colleen. Hi, whispered Jeff. Laurie laughed as the three girls walked away. Jeff shrugged. I can't help it, he said sadly. Let's go beat them up, said Bradley. Then they won't say hello to you anymore. He started after them, but Jeff didn't follow. Come on, Bradley urged. Girls are easy to beat up. You just have to hit them once and they cry and run away. Not now, said Jeff. Why not? Everyone will see us. We'll get in trouble. Bradley stopped. You're right, he agreed. We'll get them after school. I can't, said Jeff. I've got to go right home after school and do my homework. Bradley was beginning to get fed up. How come you're always doing homework, he asked, hands on hips. He said the word homework the way other people might say the word manure. Jeff shrugged. Do you like doing it? Bradley asked. It's okay, I don't mind too much. Bradley kicked at the ground. Do you think if I did my homework, Mrs Ebble might give me a gold star? He asked. I don't think she gives gold stars just for doing your homework, said Jeff, but she might. Maybe I should do it sometime, said Bradley. Why don't you come over after school today? Jeff asked. We can do our homework together. Bradley's face twisted in anguish. Today? I don't think today's a good day to do homework. I can help you... Jeff started to say, then he stopped. You can help me with the stuff I don't understand. All right, said Bradley, I'll do it. Good, said Jeff. First we'll beat up those girls, said Bradley. Then we'll go to your house and do our homework. So Jeff's just convincing Bradley ever so slightly to sort of change his ways, isn't he? He's thinking about doing some homework, which he wouldn't have done before. So chapter 12. Just before the end of the lunch period, someone knocked very lightly on the door to the councillor's office. Come in, said Carla. A girl timidly stepped inside. Are you Miss Davis? she asked. Yes, but I prefer to be called Carla. Do I have to tell you my name? asked the girl. No, not if you don't want to. Colleen Verygold, said the girl. She sat down in one of the chairs around the round table and said, I don't know who to invite to my birthday party. Carla remained standing. See, there's this boy I want to invite, said Colleen. Do I have to tell you his name? No. Jeff Fishkin. Carla smiled. But if I invite Jeff... They'll have to invite another boy, because I can't invite seven girls and only one boy, can I? I don't 
Except Jeffo has only got one friend and he's the most horrible, rotten boy in the whole school. I can't invite Bradley Chalk as my birthday party. I just can't. She took a breath. So what should I do? You want me to tell you whom to invite to your birthday party? Laurie says you're good at solving problems. Laurie solves her own problems. I just help her think for herself. But I don't know what you think. I don't know what to think, Colleen exclaimed. I can't invite seven girls and only one boy. And I can't invite Bradley. When's your birthday? November 13th. Then you still have plenty of time, said Carla. Let me give you a form for your parents to sign. Right now, I'm not even allowed to talk to you without your parents' permission. That's dumb. No, it isn't, said Carla. Some parents don't want strangers giving advice to their children. But my parents won't care, said Colleen. They said I can invite anybody I want to my birthday party. That's not the point, said Carla. She handed her the form. Colleen reluctantly took it. Can't you just whisper it to me, she asked. Carla shook her head. Melinda and Laurie were waiting for Colleen when she came out. Who are you going to invite? asked Melinda. Not Bradley, said Laurie. Please, not Bradley. I don't know yet, said Colleen. She won't tell me until my parents sign this form. Chapter 13. Bradley dragged his feet as he walked to Carl's office. So it's Bradley's turn now, I see. She was waiting in the hall for him. It's a pleasure to see you today, she said. I appreciate your coming to see me. She held out her hand. He stepped past her and sat down at the round table. She sat across from him. The reason the president doesn't wear a hat is because the doorways are too low, he said. He used to wear one, but every time he walked through a door, he'd hit his hat and it would fall on the floor. That makes sense, Carla agreed. Thank you for sharing that with me. But, she whispered, I thought, I thought you weren't allowed to tell me such top secret information. The president says he trusts you, said Bradley. Oh, thank you, Bradley, said Carla. I'm glad you trust me. He looked at her as if he thought she were deaf. He hadn't said he trusted her, but he'd said the president trusted her but he decided to let it go. She was wearing a yellow shirt with a large green triangular, triangular buttons all the way down the front. On one side of the buttons was a big white exclamation point. On the other side, there was a big white question mark. Jeff trusts you too, he said. I understand you two have become friends, said Carla. We're best friends. That's wonderful, said Carla. Today after school, we're gonna do our homework together at his house. I'm gonna help him with the stuff he doesn't understand. That's very nice of you, said Carla. I'm sure Jeff appreciates having a friend, having you as a friend. I'm his only friend, said Bradley. But even if he had other friends... He won't have any other friends, Bradley interrupted. You don't know that. Yes, I do. I'm his only friend. But suppose he makes new friends. I don't want him to. But if he made new friends, then his new friends could become your friends too. He won't, said Bradley, shaking his head. Just because you and he are friends, that doesn't mean he can't have other friends too, said Carla. Yes, it does. Why? Because, he said proudly, so long as Jeff is friends with me, nobody else will like him. Chapter 14. Homework. After school, Bradley Chalkers were going to Jeff Fishkin's house and they were going to do their homework together. Bradley couldn't believe it. Homework. It was all he thought about as he sat at his desk, last seat, last row, and waited for school to end. Maybe it won't be too horribly reasoned. After all, Jeff always does his homework. He must like it. The more he thought about it, the more he liked the idea. Homework. Work you do at home. Except he wouldn't do it at his home. He would do it at Jeff's. And that was even better. It would be his first time over at Jeff's house. And after he did his homework, Mrs. Ebble might give him a gold star instead of scribbling. Instead of scribbling, he drew little stars one after another until the bell rang. But first they had to beat up those girls. Come on, let's go, he said, hopping out of his seat. Just a sec, said Jeff. He got a book from his desk. Oh, do I need one of those? Bradley asked. He hadn't realised that in order to do his homework, he would need to bring his book home. That's OK, we can share mine. They walked outside. There was a, there was a light drizzle. They're in Mrs. Sharp's class, said Bradley. We can wait here until they come out and then sneak up behind them. Who? Oh, those girls. We have to beat them up so they won't say hello to you. We should probably get started on our homework right away, said Jeff. It won't take long, Bradley assured him. You just have to hit them once and they cry and run away. But it's raining, said Jeff. It was barely misting. Good. We push them in the mud and get their clothes dirty. Girls hate it when their clothes get dirty. They stood about ten yards away from Mrs. Sharp's door and waited. Several kids came out, but they didn't see Colleen, Laurie or Melinda. Maybe they've already gone home, Jeff said hopefully. No, nah, girls always take a long time to leave class, Bradley explained. First they have to put their papers neatly in their notebooks. Then they have to mark their places in their books and put all their pencils in their pencil holders. Then they put everything away neatly in their desks. He said it as though it was the most disgusting thing anyone could do. Shh, here they come. Melinda, followed by Colleen and Laurie, came out of Mrs Sharp's room. Bradley put his finger to his lips. 
Then he and Jeff walked up behind them, keeping their distance. They followed the girls around the side of the building and along the sidewalk away from the school. Let's just go home, said Jeff. The homework might take a long time. Girls kick, warned Bradley. They don't know how to punch, so they try to kick you. He quickened his pace until he was just a few steps behind the girls. Jeff lagged a little behind. Laurie was the first to turn around. Bradley chalk, as she said, making a face. Laurie loudmouth, snapped Bradley, the ugliest girl in school. Melinda and Colleen stopped walking and turned around too. Grow up, Bradley, said Melinda. Make me, he replied. Hello, Jeff, Colleen said very quietly. Hello, said Jeff. Quit saying hello to them, said Bradley. To free country, said Laurie. We can say hello. Not to us, said Bradley. We didn't say hello to you, said Laurie. Just him. Hello, Jeff. Hello, said Jeff. Laurie laughed. Why don't you just leave us alone, Bradley, said Melinda. No, you leave us alone first, Bradley said. And he pushed Melinda. She pushed him back. He pushed her again. She shoved him off the sidewalk. He slipped on the wet grass and fell to the ground. Laurie laughed hysterically. Bradley scrambled angrily to his feet. You got my clothes dirty. Bradley, wet his pants, teased Laurie, hiding behind Melinda. Shut up, he yelled. You started it, said Melinda. I'll punch your face in, said Bradley. He shook his fist at her. Melinda raised her fists in the air. He charged towards her and kicked her in the leg. She slugged him in the face with all her might. Bradley stumbled backwards and almost fell again, but caught his balance. He glared at Melinda as his eyes swelled with tears. No fair! Four against one! He shouted, then ran home, crying. So, see, Bradley likes to act like he's horrible and mean and tough, but really, it's not, is it? It's all a bit of an act. So, there we go. We'll leave that for today, and we'll pick this up another day. Okay, bye for now.